Hi there, and welcome to uh, Strip Chat's discussion about No Nut November and fapping. Um, your, uh, your webcam is not broken. Uh, there really is a, a guy wearing a tie um, and a whole bunch of clothes on your webcam today. Um, we are bringing you something special. In partnership between Strip Chat and the Sexual Health Alliance, um, they have asked me to come on and share with you today some of the real research around masturbation. Masturbation or fapping is a highly controversial kind of area and issue these days. And there's a whole lot of people that are worried about what you are doing with your genitalia. There's a whole lot of folks that are telling you that you might be doing something wrong with it if you touch yourself or if you masturbate, if you play with yourself, if you choke the chicken, if you rub the little man in the canoe, um, or any of the millions of euphemisms for masturbation. Why are there so many different words for masturbation? Because it is a universal sexual experience for humans and for animals. There are a whole lot of animals that masturbate too, including porcupines. We might talk about that today. We might not. But what I am going to be talking about today is what the research and what the medical uh, data show us about masturbation. Because I want you to be able to make good decisions about your own body. I want you to be able to make healthy decisions around your sexuality. Without a whole lot of people telling you that you're doing it wrong, or that there is something wrong with you that you enjoy the way your body feels. Um, <clears throat> I'm wearing a tie today because when we did this last time, and uh, you can look at YouTube, you can find it in the archives, um, Strip Chat and Sexual Health Alliance partner asked me to come in and talk about ma uh, webcamming and anxiety. Because we did some research with Strip Chat um, uh, over the summer. We found some really interesting results that I'll be talking with you about. Um, but one of the reporters that covered this uh, was concerned that I was, you know, not wearing a tie. Um, apparently, I am less professional if I'm not wearing a tie. I, I, I kind of understand that. Okay. Um, I will say that I'm going to be wearing my clothes all day here. I'm not taking my clothes off, and like, unlike many of the wonderful, beautiful people on the Strip Chat platform, I'm actually not going to be demonstrating masturbation for you today. Um, we're going to talk about it. You can do it if you want, but I don't really want to hear about it. You're welcome to, to, to go ahead and masturbate if that is where you need to be, um, but you don't have to share that with me because it's really not anything I'm interested in. What I am interested in, though, is helping you to understand how to make good decisions for yourself. Um, I know that there are probably going to be some haters on here. There are folks out there who are just dedicated to the idea of telling you how wrong it is to masturbate. There are folks out there who are just really, really concerned about making sure that people particularly men, don't masturbate while they watch pornography. Some of those folks might come to our discussion today, and if they do, I guess that's okay. Um, they are on a platform uh, where there are naked people and where there are people being sexual, and I hope that if they're here, they can manage that. I actually believe they can. They, they might believe that they're addicted to masturbation and addicted to sex, I don't really think that's the case. But if they want to tell me how much they hate me or tell me how much they disagree with me, the best way to do that is to throw some tokens on the table. Um, because my expertise and my thoughts, my information here, and certainly my investment in, for instance, arguing with you or discussing these issues with you, they're not free. Um, if you want me to invest time and money in arguing with you, you're going to have to invest in that yourself. 
So again, we are talking today about masturbation, about self-pleasure. I'm going to talk for a few minutes and we're going to, I'm going to cover some of the research. I'm going to cover some of the medical information about masturbation. Um, and then hopefully we'll take some questions and we can engage with folks out there. One of the things I want you to start off with knowing it, oh, oh, and I need to say something really important. I'll probably say it a few more times as we go today. Me talking with you, even me answering questions for you, is not me doing therapy with you. You're not my patients. Um, I wish that I was such a wonderful psychologist and sex therapist, because I am. My name is David Lay, and I'm a psycho psychologist and a sex therapist based in Albuquerque. And I am the most excellent sex therapist and psychologist that has ever been on a webcam. I'm probably the only one, so it's a, it's a low bar right now. But you being my, uh, you listening to me and talking with me about masturbation, um, doesn't make him my patient. We already got a question, and I'm going to go ahead and answer it, because it's a good one. Does masturbation go you, make you go blind, or does wanking make you go blind? Popcorn 1991, the year I graduated high school, um, is asking us that. So it's funny. Um, a guy named uh, <clears throat> uh, Benjamin Rush was a, do a physician and a signer of the Declaration of Independence back in 1776 in the United States. And Benjamin Rush believed that masturbation made you go blind. Benjamin Rush created that belief. He also treated masturbation with leeches. Please, whatever you do, don't think about where he put the leeches to try and make people stop masturbating, right? Um, Masturbation doesn't make you go blind, and it's interesting because what the research actually later found out is that there are a couple of interesting things connected to sex that do make people go blind and that do affect their behavior, make them act in crazy, unhealthy kind of ways. This is probably what Benjamin Rush was seeing, and it's the untreated effects of syphilis and gonorrhea, sexually transmitted infections that were present in the New World in, the, in America in the 1700s. It wasn't masturbation that made you go blind, but it was sexually transmitted infections. And Strong Bond is asking me, as a man, can you masturbate too much? Well, whenever I get that question, I always ask, what does too much mean? Um, I'll tell you, as a therapist, um, I teach other people that too much is more than the therapist does. If you're mastering more, masturbating more than I am as your therapist, then yeah, it's probably too much. Um, too much is relative. The question is better asked um, with another question. Do you feel comfortable with the masturbation that you're doing? Do you feel like it's a healthy part of your life? Have you ever sat down and thought about your masturbation? Have you ever talked with your partner about masturbation? Because when we, when we think about somebody masturbating too much, usually it's too much for the context. Context in a couple of ways context within your religion, and if you were taught that any masturbation is automatically sinful and unhealthy, and you masturbate one time, it, it's going to feel like it's too much. If you masturbate and your wife or partner thinks think that you masturbate too much or wish that you were not masturbating, if they think there's something wrong with you masturbating, then again, masturbating one time is too much. So when, now, the research used to suggest, people in, in, in the sex addiction field used to say that if you, on average, have an orgasm every day for about three months, then there's something wrong with you. Then that's too much. The problem is they never talk to all the people out there who are masturbating and having orgasms. And I don't know, you know, maybe they've never met multi-orgasmic women um, that could have 30 or 40 orgasms in a night um, and blow their whole monthly average. So if you find yourself wondering or being told too much, too much compared to what? 
And let's answer that question before we decide that masturbation is unhealthy. Supreme 86, <laughs> I love this. Okay, so Supreme 86, I love you. Thank you for bringing it uh, to the table today. And, and Supreme, Supreme 86 says, masturbation depletes vitamins and minerals. Oh boy. So in the 1700s, um, a guy named, uh, actually 1600, 1673, I believe, Samuel Tissot was a Swiss physician who published a monograph where he said that masturbation depletes men, not women, just men, of essential minerals and vitamins, just like Supreme 86 is saying, back in the 1600s. Now, it's not true. Um, uh, Samuel Tissot was concerned that masturbating makes men less manly. And basically, he was arguing and concerned that if you masturbate, that when you squirt out that ejaculate, that you are losing some of your masculinity. I'm going to put this in today's language. There's a whole lot of folks that are out there saying that if you masturbate too much, it reduces your testosterone. It makes you less manly. Testosterone is the, the hormone and the neurochemical that affects masculinity the most. But you know what the research actually shows? The research actually shows in multiple cases that people who have sex more and people who masturbate more have higher levels of testosterone. That stopping masturbation is actually, stopping orgasms and sex and masturbation is included in that are more likely to decrease your testosterone. What I found really, really interesting, in Supreme 86, I'm looking at you right now. People who feel more guilty about masturbation have lower levels of testosterone. So if you're worried about your essential vitamins and minerals, like testosterone, when you're masturbating, go ahead and masturbate, baby, because that actually is going to increase your levels of testosterone and make you more of a man. If you feel guilty about masturbation, those are real issues and those are real significant issues that we need to talk about and we'll probably talk about some more today. But that's more connected with morality and religion and your idea of what a man is. Guess what? Real men masturbate and real men, hmm, maybe don't feel awful about it. Pornoham asks me, does masturbating affect the immune system? Um, and actually, I love that question. Um, so there is forthcoming research that has not yet been published. It is some extraordinary kind of research and data that actually suggests that Pornoham is right. Masturbation and orgasms appear to increase the functioning of your immune system. Um, if you don't want to get the flu this year, um, get a flu shot. For the love of God, please get a flu shot. And go ahead and masturbate. Because the more you masturbate and the more orgasms you have, the healthier your body is and the stronger your immune system, the more you're going to fight off that flu. Round in the middle. Oh, sounds like religious propaganda, he says. Yeah, you're right. Um, most of the concerns and dialogue about masturbation have really come out of a long history of, of religious concerns about masturbation and sex in general. There are some folks who suggest that there are really a couple of reasons why religion exists. One, it is to create a community and a self-supporting community. But two, it is to control sexual behavior. Because historically, before contraception, if a tribe had young people that had sex, um, uh, you know, kind of when they weren't ready for it, they could end up having babies and children that the tribe would then have to support and that the, that the young people couldn't support. So one of the ways that religions attempted to control sexual behavior was by making people feel bad about it. Um, masturbation is a universal human behavior. Um, overwhelmingly, humans masturbate. In fact, there is there are data uh, there there are sonograms and and ultrasounds and such that show that infants fetuses masturbate in the womb they don't have orgasms but they're touching themselves in that way, in that area of our body that feels really good when we touch it that's what that part of the body is for Pretty Kate, a model on the site. Pretty Kate, thank you for doing what you do because you're out there helping people. Um, she asked me, oh my God, 
Okay, if you eat your cum afterwards, so you get your vitamins back. Um, so I gotta say, there's absolutely no research on this. Um, um, I will say, some. My first book is called Insatiable Lives, um, and it's about cuckolding and hot wiping. And in the cuckold community, it's actual research that I did about the cuckolding fetish. In the cuckolding community. There is this kind of interesting, sort of bizarre um, idea that if you eat semen and if you eat the semen of other more powerful bull type men, you'll become more manly from consuming their testosterone. It's pretty unlikely. Um, your stomach is going to break down testosterone. Um, it's not really going to get absorbed very effectively into your body that way. Um, testosterone is more effectively absorbed into your body through injections or creams that is absorbed through the skin. So, um, sorry, pretty Kate, but you can go ahead and tell the guys who are watching you and paying to watch you that if they want to be manly, um, they should go ahead and um, do whatever you tell them. Uh, Supreme 86 is, is saying uh, baseline levels of testosterone return seven days after masturbation. Not so much. Um, it, it would be lovely if there was actual research data that supported your idea. There was one study back in around 2001 that suggested that, and it was a very small sample, I think 13 people, and in that study it suggested that uh, young men experienced an increase in testosterone after they stopped masturbating. Unfortunately, that very small study has never been replicated, and there have now been multiple very large studies, in one case is 37,000 people whose masturbation and sexual behavior and orgasms and testosterone levels were tracked. And in that research, it found that masturbation and orgasms increased testosterone, and that abstinence from orgasm and sex um, correlated with a decrease in testosterone. So I'm sorry, Supreme 86, but if you want to um, send some research my way, feel free. Um, but guess what? The plural of um, anecdote, stories, is not data. You don't get to just come up with stories and call that research. Um, Heat789 says, I make love with my wife enough for me. Good for you. I will ask, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you're doing on the webcam site, though, because most of the people that are coming to this site are masturbating. Um, and guess what? The more people masturbate, the more sex they have. Isn't that interesting? Here's the really interesting thing. There's, there's a lot of people out there who claim that masturbation is a replacement for sex and that if you masturbate too much, you'll end up not having sex with your wife. You'll end up not having the kind of sex that you want to have. But research actually finds that people who masturbate more, in fact, shh, people who watch pornography more, have more sex because they are people with a higher libido and they're people who are engaging with their sexuality. Now, in the research that we did, actually, with Strip Chat a little while back, we found something really interesting. We found that there were people who came to the webcam site, who come to Strip Chat, and feel a lot of guilt and shame about it. What's interesting is that we compared those folks to the people who feel less guilt and shame about being on the site. And we found that people who have more sex and people who masturbate more feel less guilt about coming on the webcam site and watching models and masturbating. If you are not masturbating, you're more likely to feel guilty and ashamed about it. Uh, Dodo7575, hope I got that right, asks, can HPV be transmitted by hands? Um, so HPV, human papillomavirus, is a sexually transmitted infection, um, and uh, it is related uh, to high levels of cervical cancer. So, e so Dodo7575, one of the first things I'm going to tell you and all listeners is go to your doctor and get the HPV vaccine because it is very effective at preventing the forms of HPV that create cervical cancer um, and penile cancer and uh, cause death and, and illness across the planet. And that vaccine has recently been approved for people uh, up to age 45 and probably older than that. Um, 
Can HPV be transmitted by hands? Probably unlikely. Um, there's no research really evaluating that. Um, the primary mode of transmission of most sexually transmitted infections is uh, genital to genital contact. Um, oral to genital contact also transmits um, sexually transmitted infections in several cases. However, for instance, HIV can, uh, causing AIDS um, uh, has never been proven to be transmitted um, uh, by oral uh, to genital sex. It is unlikely that uh, masturbation, hand-to-hand, -hand, mutual masturbation um, is going to transmit HPV, but better safe than sorry, get treated and get a vaccine. Sperm, uh, let me see, not Nazi army, are you kidding me? Okay, so one of the things we have to talk about here, and I'm sorry, I'm going to derail for a second, um, is that there is a large group online of folks that are dedicated to telling you how bad masturbation is and how unhealthy it is and how unsafe it is and how dangerous it is and how it makes you less of a man. Um, there's an interesting overlap between those groups and white supremacists and Nazi groups. And in fact, the Nazis, Wilhelm Reich was a psychiatrist in the 1940s. He lived in Germany. He actually wrote about the way that the Nazi army actually encouraged young men not to masturbate. And that uh, Wilhelm argued that this was a way to make young men hate themselves, to make them more vulnerable to exploitation um, by the Nazis. So Nazi army coming here and telling me that sperm discharges some vitamins and repeated masturbation <laughs> results in loss of vitamins. <laughs> um, if there's a change in diet style, would that result in degradation of health? Um, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Um, but it sounds like if you are concerned about your vitamins, go ahead and take a multivitamin. Oh, wait! The research on multivitamins now shows that taking multivitamins really doesn't have much of a health effect. Um, eating a good, healthy, balanced diet. Remember, I'm a psychologist. I'm a mental health therapist. I'm worried about your brain. But eating a good, healthy, balanced diet um, and lots of fresh, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables is the best thing for your body, for your sexuality, for your heart, um, and for your semen. Now, if you want your semen to taste good for your partner who might um, uh, perform oral sex on you, apparently if you drink uh, pineapple juice for a couple of days, it increases uh, the positive flavor of your, of your semen. Um, Loveland Comboy, oh my god, um, says he's a cuckold and he's addicted. He says, once I think about it, it turns me on more than Viagra. Um, so my second book is actually called The Myth of Sex Addiction, and it is me talking about the limitations and problems of using the term addiction when it comes to sexuality. Cuckold guy, you know, it is cool for you to say that it feels like an addiction because there's lots of things that feel like an addiction. What I would say is that um, thinking about being cuckolded and thinking about your partner with another man and watching them or hearing about it turns you on because that's the way you were made. There's even some research that suggests that at an evolutionary level we were designed to compete against the presence of other men. There is research, and here's some masturbation research for you, that when men watch pornography that involves multiple men and a single woman, kind of the cuckold phenomenon, they ejaculate harder and their ejaculate contains more sperm. Why? Because we were apparently made to compete against the presence or the sperm of other men. That might be one reason why that fantasy is so exciting to you. I'm going to remind everybody, um, especially those folks that are just joining us now, that um, I am Dr. David Lay. I'm sponsored by the Sexual Health Alliance um, and Strip Chat to be here today with my clothes on, wearing a tie, and being professional for you so that you get to hear the science about sex and masturbation, the real science and the real research. Um, Nazi Hazi, 
asks, does masturbation prevent early ejaculation? I love that question. It's a very good sex therapy question. And in fact, that oftentimes is one of the recommendations that we make as sex therapists to men who are struggling with early or premature ejaculation. Now, we have to be clear, premature ejaculation clinically means less than one minute. Um, there are many people, there are many men who ejaculate sooner than they think they should because they've learned about sex from watching pornography where all dicks stay hard all the time and men come on command. Um, the real life of sex is a little more complicated than that. Um, but if you remember the movie, uh, what's it called? Something about Mary, right? And the guy masturbates before his date because he's so nervous about it. Um, that actually is one of the recommend recommendations that we often make. When, when we see men who are struggling with ejaculation too early in sex and they want to last longer, we invite them to masturbate prior to sex. The best thing is masturbate with your partner. You masturbate, they masturbate, you watch each other, you ejaculate, and then you keep watching them or keep being sexual with them. Oral sex and manual sex doesn't take an erection um, until you get erect again, and chances are good this time you'll last longer um, than you, uh, perhaps as long as you want to. Dome 2004 uh, says, I've been masturbating for seven years continuously almost every day. Is there any hope of recovering from this period of masturbation? And Dome 2004 is 22 years old. So Dome, I'm going to tell you, there's nothing to recover from because masturbation is one of the healthiest human behavior, human sexual behaviors we know of. There's no risk for infection. And interestingly, people who masturbate more, men who have sex more, live longer. So Dome 2004, you're 22 now. If you keep this up, you're going to live to 150, I promise. Um, Dome, there's nothing to recover from. Masturbating every day at the age of 22 is normal. It's healthy. It's human. Um, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're here. Take care of yourself. Um, and we'll see you in, what, 2300? Um, uh, hope, hopefully I live that long, too. Very Hungry asks, am I a real doctor? Yeah, Very Hungry, I really am. Um, I am a board-certified sex therapist, and I am a licensed clinical psychologist with a PhD. Um, I do this for a living. I treat people in my office. I treat people electronically. If you want to find me, um, uh, davidlayphd.com is my site, and you can contact me there. But yeah, I'm a real doctor. Unlike most of the people out there online who are telling you that masturbation is bad for you, they're telling you not to fap. Why? Because they have moral problems with masturbation. And because they think men who masturbate are somehow more manly or have more self-control than people who don't masturbate. <sighs> Boy, the interesting thing is, the more you know your body, the more you understand your sexual response. Frankly, the more you masturbate, the more self-control you have over it. There's interesting data and in research from an Israeli researcher named Yaniv Afrati, and he found that the people who try not to think about sex, the people who try not to think about masturbation, actually have less control over it. Those thoughts come up more. The more they hate themselves, the more they try to make those thoughts go away, the more they try to control their masturbation the less control they have. So rather than trying to stop masturbation, the, the, the more you hate yourself. Masturbation is, you know, another word for masturbation is self-love. Um, and that's what it is. It's about understanding and accepting your body, your sexuality, um, and embracing it. Supreme 86 is back. Hey, brother. Glad to hear you. Um, and he says, guys, this doctor is lying. He says, look into Tantra and the benefits of semen retention are real. So Supreme 86, you're a pro, man. I'm proud of you. Um, Tantra 
is an Eastern religion uh, derived kind of uh, celebration of, of, of sexuality. And in, uh, Tantra attempts to increase our sexual pleasure, increasing self-control. Um, uh, the Kama Sutra, for instance, in India, um, a book that shows all the kinds of different sexual positions that people in India had come up with, um, is related to Tantra. And Supreme 86 reminds us that Tantra folks argue that keeping your semen somehow makes you more manly and gives you self-control. This is related to Chinese arguments about chakra. And uh, Kung Fu artists oftentimes will argue the same thing. They'll say if you have sex or if you masturbate that uh, it gives you, that it, it depletes you. This sounds just like Samuel Tissot in the 1600s. This sounds just like the football coach who tells our athletes not to masturbate, right? Or not to have sex on the day of the event because somehow that's going to make you less athletic, less less strong, less quick. The research shows, and, and friends of mine want to make a t-shirt that says, the research shows, because I say that a kind of a lot, because I think the research really is important. The research is how we move to the science and move away from morality. And what the research finds when we look at athletes and sexuality is that if they have sex or an orgasm within an hour of their athletic sporting event, it does have an effect. But any other time than that, no effect whatsoever. Damien105 let, lets, lets everybody know that he thinks I'm very handsome. And cheers, Damien. I appreciate you. Um, Uh-oh, Nazi Army is back. Hey, uh, dude, I'm... Didn't mean to make fun of you. Um, I think it's really important, though, that we pay attention to the uh, complicated uh, relationship between racism and sexism and negative sexual attitudes. Now, and, and he asks, does excessive masturbation result in any neurological problems long term? In fact, it probably makes your brain healthier. Um, so um, there's a lot of data and a lot of arguments online that are, um, uh, uh, sorry, it's not data, I'm going to clarify myself, it's a lot of stories of people claiming that what people who watch pornography too much um, change their brain. There's even some interesting research that showed that there are people who watch pornography a lot and people who don't watch much pornography and that their brains look different. Here's the problem, is that people who watch pornography a lot are people who have high libido. And people who have high libido have brains that look different from people who have low levels of libido. Um, what we need to remember is the question of causality. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? My joke is, you, you can tell the answer to that question, which came first, chicken or the egg, by whichever one is smoking the cigarette, right? Because that's the one that came first. Um, it's a bad joke, I'm sorry, but um, it's the only joke I've got. People who like sex and people who have um, high libidos have brains that are different from people who don't like sex. People who like sex and have high libidos and masturbate a lot watch pornography. Because watching pornography increases the feelings of pleasure and arousal as we, wa as we masturbate. There's actually research that looked at this. They compared um, the feelings of pleasure, uh, and this is in men, Feelings of pleasure, um, the hardness of the erection, um, the strength of the ejaculation, and the pleasure of the orgasm. When they masturbated to fantasy versus masturbating watching pornography. And what they found was that men who masturbated while watching pornography reported higher levels of arousal, more satisfying orgasm, and stronger ejaculation. Pornography is a tool to enhance sexual arousal during masturbation. That's why 90% of uh, pornography use is accompanied by masturbation. That's why people are watching pornography. It's to make their masturbation better. Very Hungry, um, and I'm hungry too, um, uh, asks, is all this the same for women? 
That's complicated. Um, we find some interesting things when we look at masturbation in men versus women. First, 75% of men report that they have masturbated in the past month. Only around 45 to 50% of women report they have masturbated in the past month. Across lifetimes, much higher numbers of men and women uh, report that they have masturbated at least once. Um, things get more complicated, though, when we look at masturbation within marriage and we look at masturbation within relationships. Because... There are lots of couples out there that are reporting that husbands are going online watching webcams or watching porn and masturbating instead of having sex with the wife. When we look at those couples, and research has actually looked at these couples, what they find is that something happened first. The couple stopped having sex as frequently. And the man starts watching pornography or webcams and masturbating to compensate for the amount of sex that he wants to have but can't because his wife isn't interested in it. In women, it's different. In women, we find that women masturbate more when they have more sex. Men masturbate more when they have less sex. When women are having less sex, they masturbate less. We don't really know why that is. Um, it is one of the issues that a lot of couples are struggling with because the men oftentimes want to continue to have more sex and the wives sometimes don't want to have sex as frequently. This is called the mismatched desire issue or discrepant libido, desire discrepancy. Um, it's a real challenge and it's one of the things that leads lots of men to come online, ha ha ha, sorry, come online, um, and masturbate and watch pornography. Um, when we look at the health effects of masturbation, um, they are less clear in women. Um, in men, uh, frequent masturbation and frequent orgasms, 21 orgasms a month is the doctor recommended amount for a healthy prostate. Most females don't have prostates unless they're a trans female. Um, and so the data is less clear about the health effects of, of masturbation in women. There is some suggestion that women who masturbate have healthier relationships um, because they, and, and are more likely to have a healthy sexuality with their partner. Um, Hard as Rock 182 points out, there's studies about the harm of addiction in pornography. Hard as Rock 182, I'm going to disagree with you. And I'm going to recommend you read my book, Myth of Sex Addiction, um, and read all of the literature at this point about research about pornography because the actual harms of pornography don't appear to be predicted by pornography use. The harms of pornography, the things that make pornography cause problems for people, are related to the moral conflict. What we have today is a world online of sexuality where people can watch pornography and be exposed to sexual material that they were never prepared for. What we are finding is that people who grew up in highly religious moral households can now go online. They can go on strip chat and they can watch all of these amazing, beautiful performers um, being sexual in sexy, amazing ways. And it feels really good. And the people masturbate, and then afterwards they feel awful because they engaged in a behavior that they were taught made them a bad person. And they feel guilty and ashamed, and they try not to think about it. And the more guilty and ashamed they feel, the higher the levels of depression and anxiety related to this. Now, the interesting thing is, Sex, masturbation, watching pornography are really great ways to turn off depression and anxiety for a little while. These folks, um, unfortunately though, they again, they want to feel better, so they go online, they masturbate, they watch pornography, and then they feel guilty and ashamed, and it creates a spiral, and they hate themselves. The harms, hard as rock 182, um, of pornography appear at this point predominantly related to that moral conflict. And people that I treat, um, and I'm going to remind everybody, um, me answering hard as rock from uh, 182's question doesn't make him my patient. This isn't therapy. This is education. Um, the people I treat who are struggling with that, who feel like pornography is bad and unhealthy in their life, they've got other issues going on. Most often they have depression, they have anxiety, and they have this 
core moral conflict where they feel like their sexuality is unhealthy and it's something that they wish they could control and make go away. The problem is not the pornography, the problem is in them. My job as a therapist, and your job too, is if you are struggling with pornography, figure out why pornography feels bad for you and, and, and where you learned that. That's how we start making changes. I'm going to come, oh wait, Celestial Stockings, thanks for tipping some tokens, my friend, um, says he's enjoying listening and, oh, oh I'm assuming, Celestial Stockings might be a female, um, and, and bless you if you are, um, uh, says they're a tantric practitioner, but unlike others, the practice we do involves ejaculating, build up with our intentions in mind while in admiring nudity. Um, boy, that's beautiful. That sounds really fun. Celestial stockings, um, kudos to you. Um, what I'll say is that what you're describing is what I would call uh, uh, celestial stockings as male. Thank you for clarifying. Um, uh, what you're describing is what I would call mindful sex. What's mindful sex? Mindful sex is when we are intentional, when we are thoughtful. When we think about sex, what kind of sex we want to have, what kind of sex we want to have in our lives. When we think about our masturbation, our use of pornography, the kind of sex we want, our sexual fantasies, other than when we are turned on. That helps us have more self-control over these behaviors. It helps us think about sexuality in a healthier more productive, safer kind of way. It also helps us then negotiate and discuss sexuality in a way that is better for our partner. There's an important thing that I hadn't mentioned before, and I want to talk about it now. Um, there are folks out there who are concerned about the impact of pornography on marriage. There are folks out there who are concerned, and there is a common um, sort of uh, uh, myth that pornography causes divorce. Um, a, a good friend of mine, a researcher named Sam Perry in Oklahoma, um, has done research on this. And his, his early research found that pornography predicted marital problems and increased risk of divorce. The interesting thing is Sam Perry is a really good scientist, and I really, I really admire him for this research because Sam looked at this question, and he said, is it pornography that is causing these problems? Sam went back and he reanalyzed his data, and he found something really interesting. He found that when he removed the variance of masturbation from this research, the effects of pornography were no longer negative, but in fact were slightly positive. But it was masturbation in these marriages that increased risk of divorce. What does that mean? It's not that masturbation in marriage is unhealthy, but it is that frequency of masturbation in marriage is predictive of a couple that are not having sex um, consistently or, or that don't have the same levels of libido and match desire. And oftentimes what the research is finding is that it is secret masturbation to pornography that predicts unhealthy uh, kind of marriages and conflict, predicts divorce. If you are masturbating on watching webcams and watching pornography um, and your partner doesn't know it and you're keeping it secret from them, it's likely to be unhealthy for you and for your marriage. It's not that that sexual behavior is unhealthy, but it is the secret. It is an unhealthy secret. It means that your sexuality is not an accepted part of your relationship. And that is sad. And it's dangerous. And it's... It's predictive of your marriage and your life kind of having problems. Very hungry. Hey, you're back. Um, asks, does the internet make it worse than before? Define worse. Um, the internet changes things. So my, uh, my third book, I've got three books. My third book is about pornography, and it's called Ethical Porn for Dicks, A Man's Guide to Responsible Viewing Pleasure. Because I think it is important to pay attention to pleasure and to be responsible. We were going to call it a gentleman's guide to pornography use, um, but the editors didn't like the term gentleman. 
I kind of do. But uh, but I illustrated the book with what I call petrochorn. Um, in, in fact, in the previous vim, uh, video that I did for Strip Chat, we in actually included some pictures of, the, of that petrochorn. Petrochorn are cave drawings that are thousands of years old. Right now, I'm broadcasting to you from New Mexico. Um, New Mexico, where a deep Native American tradition and history. Um, just a couple of miles from my house, there are these rocks, um, lava rocks, that have all these pictures carved on them from 500 to 2,000 years away um, ago. Some of the pictures are sexual. Some of the pictures are people having sex. Some of the pictures are people um, uh, with penises and genitalia. Um, because sexuality was a big part of those folks' lives, and they drew the pictures to demonstrate that. What's interesting, though, is that the Internet now gives access to, to those kinds of pictures to people that never had access before. Now, people who, as I said before, people who grew up religious, who got no sex education, can jump on their phone, can jump on their computer, and be exposed to sexual material that arouses them and makes them masturbate, when these are people who were taught to hate themselves that they masturbate. The internet now gives them private access to that sexual material. What's interesting is that, um, and I find all this stuff really interesting, what's interesting is that people who watch pornography more become less religious over time, develop more accepting egalitarian values towards sexuality and women and feminism, because they stop believing some of those values, conservative values around sex, that a lot of religions are teaching um, let's talk about religion and sex for a minute. Does religion mas um, prohibit masturbation? Um, some religions actually do, but the Christian religion doesn't. A lot of people believe that the Bible says you shouldn't masturbate. Now, the Bible does say you shouldn't lust, but it doesn't say you shouldn't masturbate. There's one story that is actually in, in, in Hebrew tradition that is oftentimes cited as, an, as a prohibition against masturbation. And it's the story of Onan. Onan and Onanism is another word for masturbation. Uh, Mark Twain has a lovely piece called The Science of Onanism that Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, wrote back in the 1800s about masturbation. And it's tongue-in-cheek, very uh, sarcastic, and funny as hell. Onan um, was a man who lived in what's a, a tribe of Jews that was called the uh, who practiced what they called the Leverite marriage tradition, and in this tradition, if a man died without children, his brother or closest male relative was supposed to have sex with the widow so that if any children were born in the next nine months, they would be genetically related to the dead man and would inherit his stuff. Onan, Onan's brother died. Onan had sex with his sister-in-law, but instead of ejaculating inside her, Onan pulled out and came on the ground. He spilled his seed on the ground. And the Bible condemned him for this. Now, since then, a lot of people have said, oh, see, because Onan pulled out and masturbated, that was bad and sinful. But the original story actually helps us understand that what Onan did wrong was not masturbating. What Onan did that was wrong was that he was greedy. Onan came on the ground because he didn't want to get his sister-in-law pregnant because he wanted his brother's stuff. Onan was greedy and didn't want to share that inheritance with any of his potential nephews or nieces. He wanted to keep all that stuff for himself. So the biblical prohibition against masturbation is misinterpreted because it's actually a biblical prohibition against being greedy. Um, I mentioned before that sex and masturbation are healthy. 
And if you're just joining us, thanks for being here. This is the Strip Chat and Sexual Health Alliance uh, broadcast of me, Dr. David Lay, talking with you about the science of masturbation. This is the real science of masturbation, not the online scare tactics. I'm talking to you about what the real research shows. And what the real research shows is that masturbation is a very healthy behavior, that masturbation is safe from sexually transmitted infections, that masturbation helps you to improve your sexuality, helps you to last longer when you have sex, and you, if you're a male and you want to last longer, helps you to learn what kinds of things turn you on in your head and in, in your body, and if you're a man, is healthy for your prostate. Helps you to have a healthier heart and a healthy body. Um, Mikey O'Toole um, is asking, "Are you? am I trying to kill No Nut November because it hurts your profits? Um, Mr. O'Toole, um, I don't make a lot of money off this. I got to tell you. Um, I kind of wish I did. Um, however, what I am going to point out is that the folks out there who are campaigning against masturbation and pornography, who are promoting the ideas of No Nut November, um, there are some kind of angry people. Uh, there are the high levels of racism, high levels of anti-Semitism, high levels of sexism and homophobia. Um, last year, during No Nut November, X Hamster, which is one of the uh, corporate partners of Strip Chat, um, they posted something that was pretty funny about No Nut November. They pointed out to everybody that during No Nut November, um, the rates of people watching pornography had not actually gone down. X Hamster, you know, I, they were sharing some valuable information. And then the uh, No Nut November people went nuts. Ah, ha, 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 and went nuts. Um, in racist, anti-Semitic, violent, aggressive, sexist kinds of ways, attacking X Hamster. It got really, really gross. It got really scary. Um, no Nut November is unfortunately all wrapped up with a whole lot of hate and a whole lot of shame. So Mikey, what I'm concerned about, I'm not concerned about money. I'm concerned about you not hating yourself. I'm concerned about you not being ashamed of your sexuality and your desire for sex. Mikey, I want you to not be embarrassed of masturbation because it's a very healthy behavior. No Nut November, unfortunately, is based on the idea of trying to get you to hate yourself. And I don't think that's healthy. Hey, Lucifer, thanks to, thank you for your appreciation. Um, and Dark Nodnal, I'm probably not saying that right, says, Fapping is a treatment for premature ejaculation. Who knew? Um, and in fact, fapping and masturbation can be a treatment for a whole lot of things. Um, if you are uh, struggling with fertility and you want to, um, increase the chances of, of getting um, uh, generating healthy sperm and uh, uh, getting your partner pregnant. Increased masturbation is a really healthy way to do that. The more you masturbate, the higher the levels of active sperm in your semen. Now, um, if you are trying to get pregnant, what I recommend is masturbation and what the doctors actually recommend, doctor recommended stuff, is masturbate every day. And then Take a day off, not a week off, not 90 days off. Take a day off and then have sex with your partner. And that increases the, 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 the level of very motile or active sperm in your semen, increasing the chances of conception. Oops. Should porn sites be supported by healthcare? Nazi Hazi asks, um, you know, let's pay attention to something kind of cool here. Strip Chat, a site dedicated to sex and naked people and masturbation, has a doctor on here talking with you about how to be healthy. I think that's pretty fucking cool. I think it's pretty amazing because Strip Chat knows that there are lots of people on this site 
who feel bad about their sexuality, who are ashamed of their masculinity, um, and, and, and ashamed of their sexual behaviors. And they wanted to offer help. And so they brought me on here to do that. Um, should, should, should porn sites be supported by health? Maybe. But I think porn sites are recognizing also that they are a vehicle to offer healthy information to their users. Um, X Hamster and Strip Chat are now starting to provide some health information. One of the things we're really excited about in the future is that we're going to come on here and do some videos for you about how to talk to your partner, how to talk to your wife or husband about pornography and masturbation and your sexual fantasies. I think that's going to be pretty amazing and I think it's a way that we can offer some really healthy advice and information to people who are out there struggling. Um, Bempo uh, likes my tie. Thank you. I did wear the tie today because when I did the er earlier video last time, a journalist out there made fun of me not wearing a tie. Apparently, I didn't look professional enough. Um, now, it is a chilly tie because I live in New Mexico. And I will tell you from experience, and I'm sorry if this is TMI, there is a time when masturbation is probably not good or healthy for you. And it is if you have recently handled chili peppers. Getting that capsaicin on your hands, that oil, and then touching yourself is really painful. Now, if you're into that kind of pain, if you are um, into BDSM and kind of the pain associated, you know, making uh, masturbation painful, then go out there and peel some, uh, peel some chili and then uh, uh, peel some chili. Um, Lucifer is back and asks, do our desires define who we really are? <sighs> you know, 95% of people out there never share their sexual fantasies or desire with anybody. Not their partner, not their therapist, anybody, because they're ashamed, because they are afraid that their sexual desires are disturbed, that there's something wrong with them for wanting these sexual experiences. There's research um, uh, back in 2016 in Quebec um, where a very large research study was done and found that 50% of the general population, not clinical people, 50% of everybody, have sexual desires that used to be considered disturbed and unhealthy. 30% of people have engaged in those desires. And interestingly, many of those desires and, and masturbation and sexual frequency predicted healthy lives and greater levels of satisfaction in life. Do our desires show who we really are? Perhaps. But I will tell you that Shaming people for their desires hurts people. Um, because what we're now finding out is that many of the things that we thought were sexually unhealthy are really, really common. And the only reason we thought they're unhealthy is because people kept them secret because they don't want to be stigmatized. Um, Lucifer, I think that the question really should be, um, can we learn better who we are by understanding and accepting our sexuality. Test Random points out masturbation is a result of lusting. Yeah, and lusting is a healthy part of humanity, a healthy part of our lives, a healthy part of our sexuality. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank you. I want to you know, really want to acknowledge Strip Chat and the Sexual Health Alliance for bringing me here today to share this information with you. Because we all want you to be healthy and safe. We want you to understand and express your sexuality in healthy, safe ways. The more you understand what masturbation is for you, the better you can make healthy decisions in your life. Masturbation's good for you. There are very, very, very few experiences or circumstances where masturbation is unhealthy or dangerous. If you're worried about your masturbation, I really want to invite you to think about what masturbation is and why you feel bad about it. 
Chances are it's because you were taught some bad things about masturbation. Now we're knowing and learning that those things that you were taught are probably wrong. I'm Dr. David Lay. You can find me at davidlayphd.com. Um, you can also find this video on YouTube in the future. Um, look for future videos from us as Strip Chat and Sexual Health Alliance are partnered to bring you real scientific information about sexuality. I want to thank all of you for being here. I really want to thank all the folks who came onto the discussion group and, uh, uh, and, and threw some tokens out on the table, even though I kept my clothes on and didn't actually masturbate for you today. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.